Okay, so the iPhone 12 Pro camera has been highlighted as one of the top smartphone cameras of the year. So what I'm gonna do is review everything I can relating to the photos and the video qualities on this phone. So take a look at all these categories. I'll be covering a whole host of them, but they'll be chaptered down below in case you wanted to skip to any relevant one. Just remember, a lot of reviews have happened already on YouTube that cover this phone's camera, which have included a lot of edited photos, whether that's Lightroom or any other external third-party apps. I'm only gonna be showcasing the raw pictures that have been taken with this phone. I have not edited them in any way. I've just left it on auto and I'll be covering those reviews. So let's dive straight in and let's start off with taking just some awesome general photography. Right, so just starting off looking at this picture here, I've taken a picture of the field near to my house and you can see it's very sharp and it's very rare to see photos like this that are just point and shoot cameras that give you the best quality that you can get. If I was walking around with my Sony a7 III and I took a very similar picture from this distance, it would be probably quite difficult to tell the difference between both of them. So I'm very impressed, especially in broad daylight, in sunny weather conditions, the pictures come out so amazing. The color is bright and vibrant and it's so realistic. I'm so impressed. I haven't had a phone which shows me this good quality on a camera. So for example, if you have a look at this next picture of these trees, it's now autumn. You can see the colors in the leaves, but not even that, if you just look at the detail in the leaves as well, it's so clear. And to capture a picture like this in less than a second, I think it's amazing. I was so impressed by how this came out. Of course, when you do look at some of the pictures whilst on the screen on the iPhone, they sometimes might look a little bit different, but while it processes and then you open it up in the Photos app, that's when you can actually really see the good quality in the photos. Now looking at this subway, little bit of a less amount of colors in there. So I wanted to go for this lighter pastel type colors. And you can see that in terms of the mid-tones, I think it captures it very well. When I was walking through this subway, it pretty much captured every detail that was there. You can see the leaves on the floor, the differentiation of the colored lanes on the floor there as well. And to be honest, although it might seem a little less vibrant, this is how it actually was in real life. Take a look at myself, I took this picture, Again, this is not edited in any way. This was on the normal zoom, so this wasn't on the ultra wide, and I can see all of the details captured very clearly in both myself and in the background, which is very impressive. If I had my SLR with me, and I've set that to take a picture using the ultra wide focal lens, it would be very similar. And I'm very impressed with the way this phone actually captures these pictures, even when you're at a distance. So moving into some indoor photography. So here I am at the office and I've taken a full length picture. So the lights in the atrium were actually off. So it was a little bit darker than what you're seeing here. So what the iPhone did was increase the exposure a little bit automatically to try and capture more details in myself. If you do look very closely, you can see my face is not as sharp as if I was taking this picture outdoors. But with the lighting condition that I was working with, it done a very good job but I wouldn't expect any other phone to be able to capture that level of detail in that lighting condition. But I will be covering more on darker night portraits very shortly. Again, in this picture, moving into a room with very sharp lighting conditions, I can see that the picture has come out very well. Of course, I'm in a very well lit room, but the lights are very sharp that they cause these shadows. And if you look in the details in my hair, you can see there's a spotlight right above me, which has caused a bit of shadows on my face. Overall, from the background, from the coat rack to my left side, to the plant behind me, the details came out very clear, up until the point that you can even read the text on the books in the shelf behind me as well, which from the distance we took the photo of is very impressive. And this last picture I took of this bicycle, I just wanted to showcase the deep blacks that you can actually get. Now, of course, if you wanted to adjust the midtones on the picture, then you'd have to manually adjust that with the app after you've taken it, but you can see in a very dark lit room where the lights were off of pure black images. So the bike handles, the bars, the wheels, the seat, everything, it's completely captured the details even though it was very dark lit in that environment. So generally capturing photos on this phone using the auto mode and not a pro mode, I think it's done an excellent job. So now let's take a look at portrait mode pictures.
So my current phone that I've had before the iPhone 12 Pro was the Google Pixel 4 XL. And the one thing I've always been impressed with the Google Pixel phones are the portrait modes. Now, when I use the portrait modes on the iPhone 12 Pro, I've noticed that they're very kind of Apple-like in the sense that I can immediately tell the difference between my previous phone and this phone. Apple have been making a massive improvements in their portrait photography. If you're taking portrait pictures outdoors, like for example, in this first picture, I'm still quite impressed. It's very good. It's got a very nice depth of field. You can see the blurriness in the background. The edges on my jumper and around my hair has been captured pretty well. And again, it's done a solid job in picking up the focal length and capturing the details there. However, if I move into the next picture here and gone back into the same room with poor lighting, it's again done a very good job. And I was quite impressed. I thought myself, it wouldn't be able to capture all of the details based on the different lighting scenarios that I was standing against. But if you see the background, the plants, it's got a nice blurry effect to it, but it's captured the edges of my body, the shirt, the hair, the face, everything pretty well. But this is not always the case. So for example, with this picture here, I was just sitting on the couch and again, it looks nice. The picture does come out very well, but if you zoom into the top of my hair, you'll notice it's made it a little bit blurry to some parts of my hair as well. So it didn't capture it perfectly. In this scenario, I did compare with my Google Pixel 4 XL at the same distance at the same time and my Pixel 4 XL did capture all of my hair without blurring any of it, whereas the iPhone 12 Pro didn't. So again, I've always been a bit skeptical with low lighting indoor portrait shots with the iPhones in general. And this is one of the reasons why I feel like it's not the strongest USP for the iPhone 12, but I would be happy to adjust this in post editing, whether I use Lightroom or whatever, to make it stand out a little bit more. And going back into the atrium of my office, the one on the left hand side, you can see how poorly lit the room actually is by looking at my face. It's a little bit blurry, it's a bit grainy, it's not too sharp. And again, on the one on the right, it's a little bit more clearer, but it's captured more of the details of the plant that I'm standing next to, as well as myself. And it's done a good job detecting the outline of my body and my cat. So speaking of low light photography, now let's take a look at nighttime photography. Okay, so here I am in my office car park and this was after sundown, so it was very dark outside. What I was very impressed with is if you hold the camera very still, the iPhone 12 will definitely take very good solid nighttime pictures outdoors. What it does, it takes about three seconds to run the exposure and get as much light in as possible and then renders it post photo taking. So when you open it up in the photos app, you'll get the clearest picture possible. So here's three examples of me just taking pictures around the car park, the details in the trees, even in the cars in the distance, the colors, it was pretty much accurate and I was so impressed. I don't think any of the previous phones I've had would be able to do this. And I'm so impressed that I wouldn't need to specifically switch to a night mode on the camera to be able to capture photos of this quality. So if I had my mirrorless camera with me again, I would get very similar probably even less quality pictures than this. And I was so impressed to have a phone in my pocket that would be able to capture this type of quality at nighttime. This is the entrance to my office building and you can see it's so detailed. The colors are pretty much exactly matching. You'll notice on the tree on the left, if you take a closer look, it has blurred a little bit. Maybe it hasn't been able to focus clearly on everything. So the entire picture is not 100% sharp, but additionally, you can see there's a bit of light fading out from those poles at the entrance of the building. So that does cause a bit of reflection into the photo. So when the camera is trying to capture all of the details, those lights are specifically getting picked up as well, which might influence the sharpness of the details in the background. So then I decided to explore a little bit more and focus on light sources. So I went down this pathway where there were colored floodlights on these trees and I focused a little bit more. So I tapped to focus on the trees themselves and you can see it has come out so well. In that first picture on the left, not just the trees were very green, very vibrant there. You can see the details in the sharpness itself, but the LED lampposts and the sky in the background have come out very well and they are not washed out. They are not faded. And I was so impressed with that. The one on the right hand side, you can see there's a pink light on the tree. That as well has come out so clearly that I wasn't expecting it to pick it up. So when I was there, everything else around it was so dark. 
but it's captured the details in the bushes next to the tree and in the lake behind it. So you can see the reflection in the lake, it's clear, it's picked it out and it's taken the exposure of everything in the picture, not specifically just that tree. So I'm so impressed. Going back to the car park, here's a close up picture of my car. I just wanted to see if it picks out the satin red and it's done it so well with, it was pretty much like broad daylight. I was actually very surprised in the dynamic range of this picture. If you had seen what it was like in real life, it was so dark. You can even see my shadow there on the side of the car when I was taking the picture. There's a bit of light reflection on the car as well, as you can see coming from the LED lamppost behind me. But this is so good quality. It goes further back right down to the building, which is about 30, 40 meters away. That's how much detail has been captured in this photo. So now I'm just taking a couple of pictures standing out in between the trees to see how much details of myself is captured compared to how much details from the tree is captured. And then there is a good balance. There is parts of the trees and the leaves that you can see are a little bit blurry, but the focus was more on myself and the lights from the floor were being reflected onto my body, as you can see from my feet. So they are bright yellow LED lights on the floor, a degradation in the quality once you zoom in to myself but how often you would zoom in to share this type of picture is another story. But it wasn't always the case where you'd get very detailed pictures in low lighting conditions at a distance. So in this example, I'm very darkened out. And one of the reasons why that is, I think is because of the variation on the focal lengths of everything in this picture. So you have the poles, you have myself, you have those very large white columns in the distance and then you have the building in the background then you have the trees in the middle based on the variation of all those things at different focal lengths i reckon the iphone 12 struggled a little bit to capture and get the clearest exposure to make sure everything is in detail it's not the worst picture i would definitely use an editing app to make this pop a little bit more make it easier to see myself but it hasn't been the most top quality picture i've taken in this scenario as i was walking down the lake there was a lot of LED lights under the trees and I wanted to capture those lights, including some of the colors at the bus stop in the background there. And although you can see a lot of light reflection in this picture, now it was very dark and it took about four seconds to get the exposure on this picture. As I was walking, it was handheld. I didn't have it on a tripod, which is why you might see a bit of the trees blurry there. But overall, I was very impressed that it still captured everything in the distance and it was on the other side of the lake. So if you do want to take pictures at a distance in very low lighting conditions like this, I would definitely recommend having it on a tripod rather than having it handheld, which is why you'd get a lot of blurriness in the trees and the objects in the distance. Now, if I have myself, against something with a strong light in the background. For example, this tree was lit up green with the floodlight. Then you can see the focus is on the color of the green rather than of myself. So this is where the iPhone 12 struggle a little bit, which is to capture details of a person in the image rather than the background, which is stands out a little bit more. So I wouldn't recommend taking pictures of light sources that are behind you rather than in front of you, because that will skew the quality of the picture in general. So here's an example of a light source being in front of me. And as you can see, it's a lot clearer. It was dark in that situation and I've actually come out very well. You can see the shadows, you can see the deep blacks in my jeans and my jacket. Overall, I would say that's a nice picture. However, I did make an adjustment using the Apple Photos app manually after I took this picture and this was the result. So I just wanted to showcase to you guys the difference between how you can make your pictures pop from the same Photos app once you've taken the picture on your iPhone 12 Pro. And that's the difference it can make. Now just quickly moving on to indoor low lighting photography. I went into my studio at the gym. It was dark and the only light source was this green LED ring around the floor. As you can see, it's captured the details very well. You do see a a light streak which is a little green one at the top of the screen but the details and the quality are pretty impressive now to add people into the mix so this is my friend who's volunteered to take some pictures with me so the one on the left is the normal zoom level and the one on the right hand side is the ultra wide camera shot as you can see it both of them are very impressive the colors are the main thing that really stand out and this is definitely one of those scenarios where I would recommend editing it after you've taken a picture. And here's another example of the same room, but using a pink light. So you can see the harshness in that pink. It really brightens up the picture and it brings out the details still in the person themselves 
even though the light is quite vibrant. So now let's move on to nighttime portrait photography. Okay, so do you guys remember from the Apple launch event when they showcased a lot of nighttime portrait pictures of these models? So here's some examples that they showcased and you can see they look amazing. They seem like these were taken from a DSLR, a mirrorless camera or some sort of top quality camera. You wouldn't expect something like this to be taken at nighttime using an iPhone. So I tried to recreate capturing this type of image at nighttime to see if it was possible. And compared to this one here, this was my result. You can see it's a lot different. Now in this previous picture, the light source you can see with the sparks and the fireworks are behind this person. Whereas I went to do the same thing. I had light source behind me, which was white. And I tried to capture that same type of quality and you can see it's nowhere near the same. Now this was portrait mode. It did maybe about three seconds of exposure to get the quality you're seeing right now. But the reason it doesn't look the same is because I feel like the picture that was taken in the Apple events, they have an external light source that they haven't shown you, which is pointing at the person themselves. So that could be a studio light, a softbox light, which specifically was taken to do a lot of modeling, but then they've used an iPhone thereafter to capture that portrait mode. The lights that you're seeing in that picture were definitely not from just the sparks behind this person. So that's where I was a little bit disappointed because I had more higher expectations. So here's an example of no light source in the background and it's done even a little bit of a better job capturing the details in my face and making the background a little bit darker. But again, if you zoom in, you can actually see how degraded the sharpness is. As I mentioned earlier, I wasn't always the biggest fan of iPhone portrait modes. And especially when it comes to nighttime portrait modes, I don't think I'll be using this specifically for any purpose there. So I just wanted to showcase to you some examples of how poorly the night portraits can actually come out unless you have an external light source that's shining on you to brighten you up so much that the portrait mode just makes it a lot easier to capture the details. So here was another picture that they showed at the launch event highlighting the night portraits. This is where they have a lot of external light coming from the buildings around them. So I went to do another picture very similar to that. So I stood here with a lot of lights coming from the building around me and you can see the details are a lot better. It's still not quite the quality that you can see in the Apple photo, but this one did come out better than the previous night portrait pictures I've taken. And to be honest, I'm happy with this, even though I can edit it a little bit more, capture more of the color range, the sharpness, the contrast, and adjust the saturation if I need to. But for the lighting condition I was standing in, this is quite impressive. So I do have to give it to them for that. Now let's take a look at selfie photos. Okay, so in this first picture, you can see the details in my hair, even the white strands of hair in my beard have come out so well with this front camera. It's so detailed, it's very sharp. There's nothing I can really fault in this picture because it is outdoors and it's very well lit. It has come out very detailed. I'm impressed with that. I even tried the portrait picture on the front selfie camera as well. And as you can see, similarly, it's done an excellent job. I'm so happy with the front portrait in this scenario sometimes even compared to the back camera portrait pictures, which is quite surprising to me. The real difference begins when you go indoors. So back into the gym, you can see I'm in the same studio, which is lit up in green. It's very low lighting. There is a bit of fading. There's no real sharpness in my face, in my beard, and it feels very soft. It doesn't feel too detailed, but when you take it even further and take selfie pictures at nighttime outdoors, this is when you can really see the quality fade a little bit. So as you can see in this one, it's not the greatest quality. It is poor lighting, but then this last one, you can see it just isn't usable whatsoever. So I wouldn't really recommend using the selfie camera if you're outdoors at nighttime. If you don't have an external light source to really brighten you up, I don't think this would do a great job. So now let's take a look at some stabilization footage with the video. As a content creator, I'm always highlighting the quality of videos. Now I need to take a gimbal with me if I'm gonna use my phone to record any videos. So stabilization is quite a key part of me deciding which phone to get. Now the iPhone 12 Pro has dual OIS, which is quite impressive. As you can see from here, I'm just using my friend 
to walk around the gym. So as you can see, I was so impressed that when I was actually recording it and looking at it on the live view on the iPhone, it was very shaky. But once I play it back, I can see actually how smooth it is. And I haven't come across a phone so smooth where it feels like it's actually on a gimbal. Even me coming down the stairs, you can see it's pretty smooth. Sometimes it's actually hard to tell if the phone is on a gimbal or not. That's why I was so impressed with this. As you can see, walking around, going around the corners, it's just perfect. And then here's just some more examples of me testing the stabilization for you guys to take a look at. So this last one, I was walking a little bit faster. I was going down some steps and I was panning to the right. And this is all shot in ultra wide. So I zoomed into the wide camera and a telephoto lens as well, as you can see here. It's done a perfect job maintaining it, but I think when it's on ultra wide, you'll see a lot more smoother stabilization. Now I just wanted to test out the 240 frames per second at 1080p slow motion. You can see the waves at the bottom of this little waterfall. It's so clear. I definitely recommend if you are going to use slow motion at this frame rate, do it outdoors or do it in an environment where it's very well lit. You'll be really able to capture the details and I'm very happy with this quality. All right guys, so this is the 4K at 60 frames per second using the back camera. And I've got the uh, wide, ultra wide angle. So it's a little bit windy. I just wanted to show you guys what it sounds like to have my voice in this type of weather. And also check the uh, video quality on ultra wide. So can you guys hear me clearly? What's the video quality like? And uh, let me know down below. I'm gonna now play you setting up this phone in my car and seeing using this as a car mount so you can record conversations in the car as well so let's make that transition right so now i'm just driving so you can set this up on a mount i've got the wide angle camera set as well so you can see more of the car even do like a carpool karaoke type video and check to see how the audio is so you can play some music on the stereo connect your phone whatever it is have a good recording from inside the car using this phone so I'm pretty impressed to be honest and the audio that comes out even for people that may be sitting in the back it would be pretty clear so I'm quite happy so let me know what you guys think right so just quickly going back to the voiceover this next clip I'm going to showcase would be me standing in the middle of a storm that's coming as you can see in the sky here and seeing the quality when it's very windy and it's raining. So I will be just standing there waiting for it to drop to showcase to you guys how much of the audio quality is lost when you speak in that type of weather so that you guys can avoid that in the future. The storm has started, it's raining. So that's it guys, as a content creator, I will basically use my iPhone 12 Pro mainly for videos. I would go out and definitely take some pictures and I know I'll get definitely good quality pictures out of it. And having the ability to use the app, whether it's in live view or after you've taken it to adjust the quality in the image, that's even better for me. So overall, am I happy with the iPhone 12 Pro purchase and the camera specifically? Yes, I am. It's very rare to find a point and shoot camera that you're always gonna have in your pocket and you can rely on it to take really good quality pictures. The only doubts I've had are specifically with the portrait modes, especially in very low lighting conditions, unless you have a flashlight or some other external light source to brighten up the person. It would struggle a little bit, 
but I wouldn't take a lot of pictures using the portrait mode. I don't take a lot of selfie pictures. So consider those things if you are looking at buying this specifically for the camera. The stabilization on it, I was so impressed. Usually I would take my folding pocket gimbal with me to take some really cool maybe footage outdoors. I don't even need to worry about that that much anymore. The stabilization in this is very good. I'm so happy with that. I can even use this as a replacement to record my YouTube videos if I need to. And as a content creator, that's something I look for. So that's my review guys. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. I've got tons more iPhone 12 Pro reviews coming out in the near future. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you won't miss those ones. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.